This is one of my new acquisitions. My husband brought this home from work, um, hmm, I think it was last week. Anyway, this fuchsia is just really gorgeous. And, um, I'm hoping that it lives. Um, I'm not very good with fuchsia, so we'll see how it goes. I know that they don't like direct sun. They like it bright, but they like it not too shady, so I don't know. It's one of those tricky plants. Um, I have a lot of problems with all Southern New Guinea patients, but this one seems to be doing well now, so far, this year. Um, I mean, it's not blooming profusely, but it's making, it's making blooms and it's not dying, <laughs> which is most important. I just rearranged some of these plants over here. Um, I have, this is, um, Calabos cabbage, and it's just becoming humongous. Um, we've had rain for two days, and, you know, before that we had, like, three or four days of rain, uh, last week, so these have just shot up like crazy. Um, I have another one over here. It's not as big, but I only just transplanted it into that container this week, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, I had that one over there in between these two, and, you know, just in the span of maybe three days, I had to move it because these leaves are getting so big and they're overshadowing everything, so I put my, um, this is my Rang Rangpur Lime uh, Citrus, and it's blooming profusely, and these little flowers are so fragrant. Um, anyway, like I said, I just moved things around so you can't really see, but that limb right there is just covered in blooms. Just covered in blooms. Fragrant. So anyway, I have it hanging over that side of the fence so that it doesn't uh, blow over in the wind. Meanwhile, I have these six, um, that's interesting, these are uh, cacti. I don't remember what this is called. I knew when I first got them. I looked it up and found out right away what they were, but no, I don't remember. And now, these are my Google, I can't find it. But anyway, all of these little things here are flowers about to explode. They look like little fuzzy, they look like mealy body actually when they first start to emerge. And so I was getting a little nervous because there's a lot. I mean, look at all these. And uh, every time I turn, there's, there's another one. Like this one here. Yeah, do you see those little things there? It looks like mealy bug, but those are actually flowers about to pop. Um, and uh, the other thing about these is that I had been, um, oh boy, this one needs to be repotted. Um, I had been putting, this is a different type of cacti. This makes a pretty little flower at the top, a little red thing. Really cute. And this is, um, this is a fruit from last year. It just started to turn red. The whole winter I was just a greenish brown and now it's red. Maybe I'll be ripe enough to save the seeds and plant them. I don't know. Not that I need seeds because these things, like, all these babies, they just pop off and there's another plant, you know, just all these babies. Um, but anyway, in the past I had been trying to prop them up with a stick and trying to keep them upright. And then I said, you know what, I think that the nature of this, this cactus is to lean, lean downwards and probably it crawls on the ground and that's how it reproduces itself. You know, I mean, look at this one here. So I think I'm just going to put this into a hanging basket and just let it just hang. Um, like this one here, I had been, just, you know, fighting to get them to stand up straight and I said, you know what? 
these things do not want to be standing up straight. In the meantime, there's this funny little chimera thing that's going on. With this, uh... This is not a different variety, this is just... This is just too... I guess... I don't even know what I want to call that, but it is a chimera. So it's like two different... Plants, I guess, that fuse together. So that's curious. I've never seen that before. Anyway, so like I said, I rearranged things. I just put up this new shelf. Well, the shelf was there before, but it was only these two on the bottom, and then I put this up top. So now everything is like really up high. But the reason I did that is because I'm getting a little frustrated with the groundhogs. So I planted um, kale in this container and that container. And this over here has some pink okra in it. And by the way, I didn't realize what was going on when um, um, Garden City Food Forest sent me those seeds. Sent me seeds for pink okra. And um, I didn't know what that was. I realized the seeds were very tiny. And I knew that it couldn't be the regular kind of okra. Like, Burgundy, you know, burgundy okra or whatever. That's a regular okra, just red. So anyway, I thought, well, what is this? So I finally looked it up last night. It's been like all oh, these, it's been a couple of months. I finally looked at it, and it actually is a type of hibiscus, which um, okra is in the Malvasia family. The Malvasia family is like hibiscus and okra and uh, marshmallows and um, cheeses is another kind of like wild marshmallow -y type flower. Anyway, um, alright, this is not good. <laughs> My mind is going all over the place now. Anyway, um, where was I going with that? So anyway, so yeah, so this is a type of hibiscus actually, which the pod is edible. I guess it's the pod when it develops is fleshy enough that uh, you can pick it young and it's edible like okra. It's not okra, but it's edible. So they call it pink okra, but the flower is amazing. It's gorgeous. It's a pink flower. It almost looks like... It almost looks, it looks like a hibiscus. I don't know what to say. Uh, pink hibiscus. A beautiful, like, uh, dusty rose color. Amazing. I'm like, oh my god, I get to grow that? I'm so excited. So I hope that, that they do well for me. In the meantime, um, I, they, they did germinate and I planted them there. Because I'm trying to... <laughs> there's, like, nowhere I can plant these things. Anyway, so these are Iona peas, which are on their way out, I think. I think they're going to be... They're going to be dying soon because before long it's going to get too hot and they're just going to wilt up and die. And, uh, you know, so they're, they're not making as many pods. These are like, um, I want to say they're like indeterminate so that, um, you know, you get the flowers at the top and then that's it. So, you know, I think that's, that's what's going on. In the meantime, like, the, like I said, with all this rain, these tomatoes here are just like going bananas. Just growing like crazy. This is a Japanese tree fillet, which I must always have in my garden every year from now on. Very delicious, meaty, dark tomato. Um, and I have uh, my King Tut peas, which are, I've been picking them. Oh, and by the way, thank you, um, Sule from um, Lorene's Garden. She gave me these seeds and I would never have bought these because I, I totally was, it was not on my radar at all. I was not looking at these. I think I've been kind of burned by uh, purple peas before. They're not very sweet. I think that uh, the purple peas tend to, to be probably there's something about the genetics of the purple that make them not it's very sweet. So therefore these peas, they get huge. Let me show you. Let me ah, hold on a second. <laughs> uh, I have some Iona peas in my pocket. 
Okay, so this is Iona. Iona and uh, King Tut. And this is not even, this is not a typical pod. This is a typical pod. There you go, that's a good comparison. So, the Iona peas are very small. Smaller than most peas, and these King Tut peas are actually bigger than most, so... <laughs> Anyway, oh yeah, I wanted to kind of show you. So the peas are huge in comparison to most peas. Um, and they're not very sweet, so they say, oh, these are good for soup. They're called soup peas. And it's like, okay, well, what kind of soup are you talking about? Am I supposed to dry them? Am I supposed to cook them green and make soup out of them? I mean, I changed it. Um... There's like zero sweetness to them, zero. It has a good pea flavor, but no sweetness whatsoever. So I can see why they call them pea soup, peas, but I don't know, I can I guess when you make uh, split pea soups, the peas aren't sweet either. I don't know. So, I'm going to figure this out. I think what I want to do is make like a green soup, just like a quick a quick cook maybe with some either vegetable broth or chicken broth maybe a little tiny bit of garlic and you know salt pepper just a simple soup you know maybe some celery yeah maybe some celery would be good um so yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure that out and make this soup and, and show you what I'm doing so See how it goes. <laughs> Pink time. Oh yeah, so like at the end of the last video that I made outside, I had shown this beautiful Gaylardia. It's a perennial which um came this thing came in um hmm, why isn't doing that? Weird. I don't know why it's doing that. It's kind of undulating with the color, with the light. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, these came in a, in a mix. A perennial mix. Um, I like Elodia, but I never grow, I never buy the seeds, because I just, you know, I'm not really, I'm not terribly fond of them. I love the color, but, um... Then they do this thing, and then this becomes a spiny ball of seeds, which is not very pleasant, and it makes too many, and then before you know it, they're spreading all over the place, becoming a little weedy. So I'm not, like I said, not terribly fond of them, but they are a pretty flower. Um, I'm thinking about moving it to the community garden where maybe they can have more space. Here's another tomato plant. These are, um, I'm pretty sure these are tangerine. A friend of mine last year gave me some, gave me one plant and it made one tomato and I saved the seeds and then I grew them. So now I have some plants. So, anyway, this year I actually, um, planted about 21 varieties of tomatoes. So I was explaining that in one of my last videos about the quandary that I'm in. You know, having a lot of tomato plants, but not a lot of different. There's not a lot of each kind. So I have a lot of plants, but few of each variety. So, anyway. Hold on. I just rearranged this also over here. I, I uh, repotted some of these. Well, I potted up, I should say, some of these, um... Hanging baskets. These are some Tulsi that reseeded themselves. So I just kind of consolidated them into these containers here. And over here, oh, this is, this is some seedlings. What is this again? Oh, these are Catherine's marigolds. I'm hoping that, um, so I planted them out in the 
in the ground, but uh, I think maybe one germinated. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something. Anyway, so in here I have... Uh, Garden City gave me some seeds for Ethiopian kale. It's, I keep saying Egyptian kale. I don't know why I keep thinking that. I know that there is a type of kale that's Egyptian, but that's, this is not it. This is Ethiopian. So, but they're, they're growing kind of small, and I can see they're getting a little yellowish. So I think that they're getting a little stunted. So I decided to pot them up. Um, and I put some vincas in here with them and snapdragons. Um, they grow, the, the snapdragons grow kind of slow, but the vinca... It might, it might kind of get a little, a little too heavy, but we'll see how it goes. Um, whatever. <laughs> so, same thing here. This is collard greens. I completely forgot to plant those. So, I'm just kind of catching up now. And this is kale. I'm putting my kale and my, um, uh, you know, this kale up higher so that, um, this is some... Um, Carrots going to see. So uh, my strategy is to put the kale up higher so that uh, the groundhogs will not be able to reach them. I've had some kale planted in this bed here with along with some um, bacana greens. Bacana greens have been like decimated by slugs. All this rain, whatever. Decimated by slugs. So I should just pull this up now, but. I'm just going to leave that alone for a minute. And I have this nice bok choy. This came from um, <coughs> Diva Jones 03. She gave me some seeds. And uh, so that's been coming along. I planted a bunch of those bok choy seeds, but um, between the cats, the, you know, the kittens digging up the soil, and the squirrels, and then the groundhog came. This, this kale was nice and it's getting nice and juicy. And then came along and ate it all up. I don't know how I missed that big juicy leaf, but it did. Um, anyway, so I have stuff here and there, brassicas, but they're kind of growing into mixed with stuff to kind of keep um, the groundhogs a little confused. So I had this on the ground. This is more kale seedlings, and they got chewed up. The groundhog was having a good old feast. Good off. Oh wait, I want to show you this. Um, my um, black raspberries are. Oh look at that! Doesn't that look delicious? <laughs> Unfortunately, I think I'm allergic to them. I'm not really sure. Um, I know I'm allergic to strawberries, and I think I'm allergic to red raspberries. But I think that I might be able to still eat the black ones. I'm not sure. It's really just a tragedy, but uh, whatever the case may be, um, why is it walking this way? Anyway, oh yeah, I wanted to sh <laughs> So yeah, this is some more kale. It was looking delicious and gorgeous and just so, it was, I was gonna pick it, like, probably today. And the groundhog came and just had a good old feast. So I'm just gonna... I don't know. I think I'm going to ask my son to help me put this container up on the wall. So like I said, I have my uh, brassicas up high. Um, a lot of them are on this wall here. I have some more cabbages here. This is uh, some more of that calabos. It's a red cabbage, Russian. Or Ukraine, I'm not really sure yet. Some more. And, you know, they're also planted up with flowers, which helps with the beneficials. And also kind of helps the groundhog to be, con to be yeah, confused. This is, this is some more of that kale. This is, I think, scarlet. The other one was um, red. Now this, what is this? Um, I think this is curly roja, actually. Anyway, I don't think that the groundhog can get up this far. I don't know. I don't think that it can scale the wall. I think I was talking about this before on another video. 
so so far I haven't had any problems with that. And uh squirrels haven't been messing with stuff either, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, but um yeah. Oh my god, this video is getting so long. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>